Hi again. This time we're looking at an equation that kind of combines a fair bit of what we've been looking at. We've got multiple variables, multiple instances of the variable. We've also got multiple variables, including we got x's, c's, and d's. And in this case, we're going to be trying to solve for x. Remember, the c and d, we'll have those still in the final solution. We're getting x in terms of everything else. c and d, we can think those would be numbers that we plugged in later. Okay. It's so always going to rewrite it, because what do we got? Uh, we've got a fraction on the one side, so we've got 3 on the top, and 3 is times x minus 2d, which is in brackets. Then on the bottom, we have minus 4, which is multiplied by another bracketed term, which is, in this case, 2x plus c, and all of that is equal to 8. Okay. We looked at before being able to try and invert things when we have a variable on the bottom. In this case, it won't work. We have variables on top, bottom, we invert it, we still have a variable on the bottom. So we're going to somehow have to get rid of all of this on the bottom. Well, remember, it's dividing everything else, so if we want to get rid of it, we multiply by this. So what I'm going to do is actually multiply by minus 4 times 2x plus c. Multiplying this entire term by that, and I got to do the same on the other side. And in this case, I'm going to actually have two brackets. You want to get used to the idea of nested brackets. Often it helps if you do different shapes. You don't have to. I could have the same little curvy bracket each time. But by using the square one, it makes it a little clearer where they start and stop. For difficult problems, having these brackets will really help organize you. Great. So I'm multiplying 8 by that. As always, I'm using my dots when I have x's. Now, I multiply this, these two will cancel. So all I'm left with on the left-hand side here is 3x minus 2d. What do I got on the other side? I've got 8, and I can multiply this in, remember. It doesn't matter what order, so I can multiply 8 times 4 and get minus 32 times this bracket still is there. Great. Well, back to this kind of problem where I've got one term in brackets, another term in brackets, two variables. I'm going to want to combine my x's eventually, but I've got to get rid of the brackets first to do so. So I'm going to multiply 3 in on this side and minus 32 in on that side. So 3 times x, 3x, and then also multiply the other term. So we have minus 6d, we have minus 64x, and minus 32c. As always, a minus and a plus becomes a minus. Now I want to combine the x's. As always, it doesn't matter which way I go. Convention, a lot of people solve to the left, but in this case I look and see a minus here, so I do want to bring it to this side. I'd rather work with pluses personally. So I'm going to add 64x to both sides, to cancel it on that side, and kind of bring it over. So, cancels. And I get 64x plus 3x, or in other words, 67x minus 6d equals minus 32c. Bring the 6d over, or in other words, add 6d to both sides. And I got 67x equals minus 32c. Hopefully you're not hearing this dreadful squeaking noise, but if you are, I'm sorry. We want to get rid of the 67, we want x on its own. What do we got to do? We got to divide. It's multiplying, so now we divide to get rid of it. And 67. So what do we got? x equals minus 32c plus 6d all over 67. And in this case, by the way, it would be the same as writing this right here. We could also rewrite this as 32c over 67 and plus 6d over 67. Since the 67 is on the bottom, we can split them. It, when you have it on the top, you can't. So, these two things are equivalent, whichever way you prefer to write it. If we knew what c and d is, we'd plug it in and solve. So, that's it. Thank you.